Welcome to the companion video for Basics of Electronics. What I'm going to do now is go through using the simulator for that we're using for the course currently, which is Tinkercad. Uh, it's a nice free online simulator that may not do everything, but for the purpose of this course, it works good for us. And that free component is always nice. Uh, the overall there are a lot of lessons if you want to go ahead with anything of like starting a simulation or do anything else there is a lot of stuff that Tinkercad provides for you depending on what you're trying to do um, this account allows you to do some basic 3d modeling which then you could use to do 3d printing afterwards or other things with those models and it also allows you some basic coding you can see even doing laser cutting and if you were going to go do some basics of circuits. So if you want to get ahead and start learning anything, you can start going through some of these lessons um, and getting some practice with it and just kind of play around with it. And so even if you have the physical kits, I suggest you get used to using Simulator because it's a nice way, see if you want to do a beginning circuit to learn and kind of work things out and then to build it physically after that. So when you're here and you want to start working with circuits, just make sure you first click circuits. You will see all of the circuits that you have worked on here as these separate documents with whatever name you've given it. You can make some changes to share it and you can also go to work on it. Um, I'm going to start a new one and you can follow along if you would like to as well or play around afterwards, but I'm just going to create a brand new separate circuit to work with. Once this loads up, we have got all of our basic setup. You have got controls to flip everything, delete components, undo, redo, annotations, the way you view. This whole open area that you see here is where you're going to be placing your circuitry and everything. You then have areas that when we come to doing coding with this, You'll be able to see the code. We have nothing now because we haven't loaded an Adreno or anything else. But you have then running the simulation because the idea is you can hook everything up and then click run to deal to actually run so it applies power to the circuits and starts doing everything. You can then stop it or pause everything. You then have all of your components that you can then work with and start hooking stuff up. There's lots of extra things here to play around with. By default, it just shows you some of the basic ones. You can go all to see everything else that you see in here, a little bit more advanced stuff and play around that we'll come back with. But I'm going to leave it on basic for right now. So in the introduction to electronics, we learned again about like you have atoms, you have electrons, the fact that electricity really is just electrons moving that you have voltage, current, and resistance, which are all just different terms that we talk about electrons moving and being stored. So once again, having voltage being the potential energy that you have, generally from your power source. Current, represented, uh, measured in amps, is the flow of actual electrons. And resistance is something that impedes the flow or slows it down. And so remember, that's measured in ohms. So to start with, I'm just going to pull up some power sources and we'll start playing with them. And so you have a lot more. It's not just batteries you have. You can have plug into the actual wall or where you can pull power from. When we get to things like the Adreno, the Adreno itself will plug into other power sources. Then it provides you with certain voltages. So we have things here like a 9 volt. So you can see to add, I'm just clicking on it and dragging and dropping it. Uh, we also have things like a 1.5 volt battery that's in a battery case and things say like a very basic coin cell kind of battery. So for one of them, if I want to move them around, I'm just clicking on it and then clicking to rotate it. You can see it gives us already these connectors at the top where we can take things off. And you can see the convention that it's already made the positive red and the negative black for us. And we can set them next to each other. Now, these are your power sources. So we don't have a circuit yet because there's nothing connecting. We have the wires, but they're not connected directly together. And within the simulator, so we don't have anything connecting it. We don't have a circuit. There is no flow. But we just have is the 9 volt 
and we have that it's like the voltage and the potential voltage that it will provide. It's a building pressure, and these are the different batteries. So 9 volt, 1.5 volt, and your 3 volts. Now each one will also provide a different level of amps, being how much it will push it through. So just we have that, just the fact that it's 3 volts doesn't mean it's going to give you these more amps. It says you connect everything afterwards. So now while I'm doing this, it's not exactly scripted. I If I screw up, it's supposed to be on purpose to show that you can screw up and things go on. So one is working with real batteries, we don't want to connect the wires together. Uh, but this is a simulator and it's not going to destroy a lot of stuff other than giving you an error if it's going on. So let's just connect the wires together on the actual battery. Let's do it on the 3 volt first. So if I want to start doing anything with uh, connecting wires, here I just click on the first connecting point and it's giving me a square. And then I can start drawing the actual wire. So I can connect it straight and it's going to say it's connected to the other side. Or I can go up and then click and click and click to try to make say maybe a nicer wire layout and so it's not just so chaotic now it's green for right now and you can see popping up on the right hand side we can then select if we want to have a different color and say we've got that connected so here we have the bad circuit that well it's a circuit nothing's running yet we haven't started running the simulation but when it's on we have the power you have going from that higher to lower that it's going to start traveling through but we have nothing of uh, no load on the actual circuit and so it's just that whole case of draining or other things that could happen so now i don't even know what the simulator is going to do but we'll just see so i'm going to kick click start simulator here up in the top right and now it's going to start running everything connected to the power and we can see here and it does nothing it's not showing me anything showing me the time so the simulator doesn't give you any indication but if you were doing this with physical materials sometimes the wire could get over like get heat up because you just have the power going through or it's just going to keep slowly draining the actual battery itself so i'm just going to click stop simulation click on my wire there and then hit delete and remove it and next I want to start looking at the batteries. How can we start reading and seeing some of these values? So like we had voltage, current, and resistance, so we should be able to read them. And you can do those things with different meters, but you can do that with a multimeter. So under the basic components at the very bottom, you can drag and drop. And we have this little simulated here voltage, like multimeter, that then allows you to read amps, voltage, and resistance. And by default, it is on the voltage. So you can see here, it's going to got the black and to red. So if I just want to hook it up to the battery, I'm just going to go red to red, black to black, and leave it there. And now, so we do have a circuit, but it's really just going through the multimeter, which is just going to read the values for us. So on voltage and resistance will do nothing. So if I click start, it'll run. It's like, okay, good. The battery was telling us it's nine volts. So there'd be nine volts. That's the potential energy that's stored within it. I can then click on A to see many amps. So this means the actual flow of what's doing, it's giving six amps that are going here. Now, if I stop, delete these two wires, and then now connect boom, instead to the 1.5 volts to test, put it back to volts, click start run. You can see, well, volts, 1.5, and we get three. So between these two batteries, we're seeing, well, okay, one provides six volts, but it's like nine volts here. Like it's nine volts, but only gives six amps. And this one's 1.5 volts, but gives you the nine amps. And lastly, stop simulator, just to be pedantic, we can then go to the coin cell battery. There you go. And here it's giving us 300 milliamps, so much smaller, but then giving us 3 volts. So that difference in between the two. So these are all our power sources, and determining what you need from this is important when it comes to like the, how many things are you hooking up to a circuit. We're going to be sticking to very basic things, but if you start adding more complex, like motors, multiple motors, and other things, you have to start worrying about well, how much load is this drawing on your batteries and your power source and you need to be careful with that so maybe you need to add more batteries into it or different power sources that provide to it 
One way sometimes is just to hook up multiple batteries together in different ways, in ways that are called, say, parallel and serial. The first chapter of the workbook that comes with the kits talks about this. But if we connect these together, well, we want to see, we want to go from flow that it's always going from positive to negative and backwards. So like we can start connecting, well, okay, the positive out of this one, connecting over to the negative of this one to start allowing flow. We don't have a circuit yet. And what I'm doing is doing this in series. So they flows from one to the next. So if we were then now to put, boom, that's the negative. And then this is the positive coming up. And the idea is that it is flowing through one to the next. And these are in series, so it's adding to each other. So we can run this and we can see, oh, hey, now it's in series. So each of these is 1.5 volts, but now we have three volts. And, but we still only have the three amps. So we have more volts or more potential energy, but we're not getting more amps coming out of this. Okay, I'll stop there. So this is more of a demo to show you getting your power sources for right now, basics for basic circuitry, using the batteries for right now, and a little demo of using the voltmeter, which we'll leave out. Other than that, I am going to delete most things from here and just leave one battery for now. And we'll start worrying about, okay, well, how do we start building a circuit and adding more components to it? Now, the first chapter, let me bring this over here. So this is the workbook. And you can see before this goes through, it's a nice thing. If you want to start reading this, goes through a lot of extra stuff and adds onto the notes but it starts talking about your power sources so the direct current and alternating current and how we're dealing with direct current with the batteries you have your schematic diagrams of putting it together being one battery or two batteries being placed there talking about the anode and cathode the positive and negative of them and then also talking about well what happens then the ways you connect them together in series versus what you've actually got overall to get more power giving you more of the schematics for how to read, say, what's the positive, the ground symbol, or the negative component for your wiring diagrams that you can see from ground, a wire to a resistor, to your actual ground, you have the open circuit, and everything here again as well. So it's a nice thing to read through and on top of what my notes were doing, give you the jumpers, you have a breadboard, you have a button, you have an LED explained with the anode and cathode, and then finally we have the components you need where we can see a wiring diagram of how to hook it up. You then see a wiring diagram. In this case, it's an adrenal, but I'm replaced. They're only using it for power. And so I'm replacing that with, again, just a battery and connecting everything together. So we're going to do something similar to this. We're going to start without a button and maybe throw in a button for fun to see what happens and do it without a breadboard and then do it with a breadboard that you can see the different way of connecting stuff together. And it's a lot easier just in a simulator to do a lot of this quicker. So to start with, we have our power source. So again, right here, that's where it's saying the five volt. Now this doesn't matter as much for right now. The five volt is just, that's what's generally what the Adreno is giving out. We then have a resistor where it's saying 220 ohm, the, bat, the button, the LED, and then going to ground. And now just remember for this is just because LEDs can't handle as many amps that are going through it. So this resistor here is to lower the amps that are coming out so that we don't destroy this actual LED. The button here is to then stop so it's not getting any actual power. So we can press the button, the light would turn on. But I'm going to do without that button first. So to begin with, we have our battery. We know we have negative. We know we have positive from right here. So we now need to go get the other components. So I want to drag a resistor over You can keep dragging as more as you want. You can give it individual names and then up here you can set the actual resistance. So this is in K ohms. So a thousand ohms. So I'm going to go for like 220 for right now. Arbitrary for the number, but just at least enough to lower some of the actual voltage. Now remember with resistors, it doesn't matter which direction that you connect anything. So it's just more that like these can you can connect to here to here on either side doesn't matter for the order of it. So we have that over here and then we can also drag an LED over which then you can change the color by selecting what you want. 
These aren't always the best. They're kind of hard to see the color changing. And then if you're not sure which one is the anode and cathode, you can always just put your mouse over each side. Now remember that an LED is a diode, and so it only allows power to go through it in one direction, which is through the anode and out through the actual cathode. Otherwise, nothing will show up. Now, before going on, I want to at least show like like the effect of a resistor, the effect of an LED if you don't use an actual resistor, and start doing some more readings with the multimeter. So here with the LED, the idea is I am just going to directly connect it in. And so the idea is that the anode should be going to the positive. I am just going to change that to red right now to make it even see it easier. And then the cathode should be going to negative, going black. So now the idea is this is going to be putting out more amps than this actual LED should be able to handle and is directly connected. Now, Let's see, we'll run the simulator right now, and, oh, it's actually working. I was completely wrong with this battery, and that was the point to show that I can do things wrong. So let's say we take out and use a different battery, so it's 3 amps, so remove this. This one gave us actually 6 amps. So now we'll connect it in. Do this a little bit nicer. Change that to black. Change that to red, and now we'll run the simulator. And ooh, not good. So right there is like, okay, well that LED was able to handle the amps that were coming out of the 1.5 volt battery, but it could not handle the nine volt, which was giving six amps that were coming out of it. So that's a little symbol here of it exploding. So I need to stop the simulator now, and then I need to add in more things to it, which is the actual resistance, that that was just too high. So let's say we just get the resistor, but for right now, we just put it in place with the multimeter to be able to read and see the values of what it's changing. So here, I'm just going to connect the positive up of the battery to one side of the resistor then follow that up to the multimeter and then just have the negative connected to the multimeter so this still allows for the complete of the circuit that's going through up through the resistor through the multimeter and coming back down i set up this way so that this now reading in is going to start reading different values for us so if we run this i don't want it on amps at least i can put it to volts we're still getting the same amount of pressure going through the entire system so that's the nine volts but the actual amps itself is different. That before when we had that hooked in, it was telling us six amps. And that's on this side here. Let's say that I go and get another multimeter. This is gonna make the wires look crazy on here. So I connect the negative up to here as well, but this time I connect the positive on the opposite side of the resistor, so before the electrons flow through and do a reading there. Uh, well, you can see here, so we have the 8.94, oops, I should put that in amps. So we have six amps before, but when we come out after the resistor, it is much lower. So I'll remove that, start the simulator, and you can see it here. We can even see if we start playing around with the actual like resistance here, is like, well, if I keep changing the resistance, we can see this amps go up and that's like going much, much smaller with the U. So even if I go with 1K ohm, you have 8.99 milliamps. Okay. So that's the whole point of that resistor and stopping that flow, the fact that we still have an overall circuit. So now I'm gonna get rid of the multimeters and we're just gonna bring in the LED and start getting that to work properly for us. So here again, we want to make sure that the cathode is connected to the negative. Boom. And I change that just to black again, just to make sure we know which side is negative. Change that to red. And then coming out from here, the resistor up to the actual anode. Red. 
I'm just keeping these as red just so we know the path right here. The color is arbitrary otherwise. So now that we have everything hooked up, we have our circuit going from our power source, the voltage, the amps flowing through, being lowered by the resistor up to the actual LED so it won't, the amps won't destroy it, and then flowing back down into the negative, so completing our entire circuit. So as soon as I run this, you can see the LED turning on and we have our circuit and right now it's just going to run forever until the battery runs out of actual power. Now I want to demo one other thing is that again it's a diode so if we hook up things wrong so if I reverse things now so we had it before and so now instead I have the negative but I've connected to the anode and I have it's coming from the positive here up through the resistor and go into the actual cathode so it seems like a small thing. All we're doing is switching those wires. If I run it, no light. Because again, LED is a diode, so if you have it the wrong way, it's not going to show up. So when building this, you have to make sure you've connected it properly. And so positive power going into the actual anode and negative flowing out from the actual cathode. And so if you're hooking up even like on these diagrams, maybe you've got something wrong or if you're working with the physical devices and it's not lighting up, one of the things to check is do you have the right direction for the actual LED? Okay. Now I will go back to what we had before. Positive to anode, negative to cathode. Boom. Now let's see if we play around with something else and see if I can goof up or get it right the first time. So um, playing out anything else is that like, like example, like, well, this is, there's no short circuits or anything else that's actually happening, which means a connection in between or something broken. But say we had an open circuit. If I delete this, you can see it's open because we have a flow from here, but it's not continuing on and going back. And so this is stopped. And so if we run the simulator, LED won't turn on. We don't have our full circuit. But what if we want to control it being turned on and off? So like we have our button here or you have things like a switch. So let's try with a button. And hopefully get to this is that when the button's pressed, either it's gonna turn on or off. I always screw up with buttons here because you have these different terminals and how they're connected and which one is connected to which one on the other side. So the idea generally is to connect one over here, connect to the other side, and we're putting it in between. So we have the resistor could be on either side, doesn't fully matter from right here, because this resistor afterwards is just like slowing the flow of electrons. And so if we go and run the simulator, LED is on, press the button, and it is not changing. So if that's not working, Next thing I do is just connect it to like, hey, well, which terminals am I connecting it to? And there we go. So this button, these little buttons here are going to be weird. I always forget between the two terminals, which is easier to see here. And they're always square. But if you have something going wrong, what's the flow? And the idea of a button, if I bring over this little diagram that's in between here, is that it's kind of what we have here. Like this is this circuit right here, similar to what's already done on the breadboard. So if we are here, the idea is that, well, the button here, this shows that you have an open circuit. The idea is that when you're pressing down, you're making connection between the two, your two, and so you're completing the circuit when the button's pressed. And so depending upon which of these actual terminals you connect, you can have it that either it's already passing through all the time and you press the button and it disconnects, or you press and it does connect. We'll come back to buttons later on as a different type of input. So you can see it here, like, woo, fancy, light on, light off, light on, light off light on light off your teacher's annoying okay so we'll stop that simulator right here now so there you go you have a basic idea of the leds and everything else and this is a whole circuit done separately on these ones now we could physically connect these as wires together but mentioned in the notes before was the idea of a breadboard which allows you to prototype stuff and so in the simulator we still also have a breadboard as well, which is a nicer way to connect stuff because you can even see how the wires and everything starts getting confused. So again, the idea of the breadboard is the outside is all an insulator and internally inside of these holes is like connecting material. 
Now these outside lines here, you can see when I put my mouse over, it highlights them all. And the idea is that all this one line right here, all these dots are connected together. So one thing plugged in and you plug something else in, they're connected from metal to metal to metal and will allow the flow of actual electrons. Now the ones that are internally right here is that instead of being going horizontal, is that they're going downwards here, that these are connected in between. So if I connect something here, it'll all, and something here, there's a path that's put through. And you have the little gutter trench in here in between. Now, reminder for convention is that when using your power sources, instead of having to like always connect everything to like the negative and positive from right here, you would then connect the negative here and the positive here, just so you have clear conventions where it's marked and you don't get lost and you have your different power. Now the idea is that these and these are uh, not connected together. You can connect them together if you want so that you can all have the same power, or maybe you have two different power sources because sometimes sensors and stuff later, some need 3.3 volts uh, and some need five volts and maybe you need different power. So we're going to recreate this circuit we have here over here. So I'm going to leave both of them on top and just bring in another power source using, boom, in this case, another 9-volt battery again. And now to begin this, I just want to connect the negative. And I am just going to connect it to the end. It really doesn't matter where along here you connect. It's not the fact that it's at the very end that it's sharing. It is anywhere here, and they all share. I'm going to change this to black just to keep it consistent with the convention of boom, of negative being black and positive being red. So then take this out and connect for the power. Change that to red. And now following this is that we still haven't gotten a complete circuit yet that, okay, I've got the red connected to here. And so now all of these lines provide those nine volts. And then this one is connected up to here and all of these provide the actual ground. So I can start building the rest of the actual circuit. So we need to go and grab another resistor. And I'm just going to do this differently, connect it in between. Set it here. I'm going to rotate it just for fun. Doesn't really matter, but I'm just placing it anywhere and you can see it's lining up with the holes for right now. So you have one terminal here, you have one terminal here. I am then going to go and take the and like LED and put them in between the two. Now this one, the reason why I have it this way, if I rotate it back around and I connect it down this way, this is doing nothing. The idea is I've connected one hole here, one hole here, but it's on the same line. So you've connected the resistor to itself. So it's generally better when you're doing this is to connect it between two different rows, whichever one you choose. And all it is is these numbers here, and these letters just make it easier for you to identify where you're placing stuff. So again, this is connected down to here. This is connected down here. This is here. This is here. This is why I have them all in between these two different rows. Now I want to start building the actual rest of the circuit. So we know we need one is well we have the cathode that has to go back down in the end to the actual ground. So now oops, I could connect from here, but I can connect from any one of these dots going down. So I'm going to connect from right here, going back down to the ground. I am going to change it to black just so I know that this is the negative side. So, so far what we have is from here, there's nothing connected for a circuit, but we have it going from the cathode, goes into the breadboard, down through these connectors on this road, to the wire jumper connector here that's black, and then jumps over to the actual ground, and then that goes up to this wire, and this goes down here back into the battery. So we still have an open circuit that's not closed yet. Now... Realize this is all I'm doing the simulators. I haven't hit in start simulator. When doing this with the actual physical device, you wouldn't have the battery connected yet, or you'd have a some way to be able to turn off the power source because you don't want to be connecting stuff together while it's running. Now, next we have to have from right here, we have to connect it over to the actual terminal on one side of the resistor. So what I'm going to do is, again, I don't need to connect it from right here. I'm just going to go one down and then put a wire over to there. And I'm going to change this to orange. Now the idea here is that, okay, well this is connecting up to here, through, and then down. And then over for this wire, which is not touching any of these, but it's plugged into this dot, which is on the same row as this one terminal right here. Boom. Now to complete the rest of it is that this has then got to go to the actual power. 
So again, like right there, I clicked on the end, but you don't, you can go with any of the ones that are down here. And so I'm just gonna click here, going to the actual positive, and I'm gonna just wanna put a convention that you put it back to red, just so I know that that's from the power that's flowing up. So now here we have a closed circuit. So it's not this yet with a button. I'm gonna leave the button out for the next one, but say if I delete this button and do this, this is what we have. I'll even change this to orange and this to black. So what we have here for the circuit is the same one here. It's just using this breadboard to put everything together. So if now we go for the flow, once we start this on, we have a closed circuit because we have the positive electrons here uh, coming out of the actual battery source up, and then connected and going down through here, up through this wire, and then it's now connected to this row, which then goes through the resistor, down here, through the wire, up through the anode of the LED, then emitting light, and then down through here, through the negative, and back into the battery, completing our circuit in the end. So I'll click Run Simulation, and after all that, boom, we got an LED. So you have that starting basic point. Okay, well, I think for this simulator for right now, this is good enough. I suggest you guys play around with all this stuff. Look further into the actual tutorial document if you want that came with the actual kit. You can follow through that and get ahead if you're just having fun to learn stuff. I'm going to be always doing these simulator videos as we go through other sections as, long, as well as the physical side. Now, I should mention, I think I should have done this at the beginning. I'm going to stop the simulation. If you want to change the name, they just make random names up here. Like this one's called Cool Cup for some reason. I'm just going to go example one. This is just so you can name them your own. And it automatically saves as you're going. And you can just click to go back to Tinkercad and the top left. And then you can see your circuit here and play around with it. So I'll call that a quits for this first simulation one. And I suggest if you haven't watched it yet to go on to the actual physical one. So even if you're only using the simulator and you're going, not going to use the actual kit, I still suggest you watch on doing some of the same stuff that I just did in the actual uh, physical kits.